Hey everyone, remember me? I am Allison and this is my podcast. Oh my gosh, it has been so long since I have sat down to record a proper episode. Um, I think the last one I did a live and that was like months ago. So a lot has happened. I am very glad to be back and sitting down to do this, but I will preface this by saying, please give me some grace. This could be rusty or I am rusty. This could be a mess. Exciting things are happening. We just celebrated Thanksgiving here in the States and it is currently Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. So it is Small Business Saturday. So make sure to head on out and shop local and support small businesses in your area this weekend. Um, and on Cyber Monday, make sure that you are shopping small first before the bigger uh, corporations because small businesses need need your love. Um, yes, let's see. It is, like I said, it's the weekend. It's Saturday and so much has happened. Um, and Vlogmas is coming up soon. It is almost December, you guys. What? That's so crazy. Where did this year go? It felt like January through like March was just 18 years long and then all of a sudden it was just bam 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 and here we are almost December which means almost Advent season. I'm so excited and Vlogmas is upon us and I actually I uh, filmed a little bit of a Vlogmas teaser for you guys that was posted a few days ago. I'll link to it um, up in the corner, but if you want to see what Vlogmas will be about this year and maybe what advent calendars I will be opening, definitely check that out for a little sneak peek. Um, oh my gosh, I feel like I have so much to say, but I'm all over the place. Let's see. I'm so out of practice with this podcast thing. Uh, if you would like to check me out on social media or give me a follow, I am Lofty Loops over on Instagram where I am most active. There's also a Facebook page for Lofty Loops Yarns, which is hand dyed yarn company. And let's see, uh, I'm, I have a Ravelry group and I will chat more about that here in just a little bit because there will be some fun things happening in the month of December. And this is my knitting podcast where I talk about all the things I've been knitting on and yarny goodness and sometimes crochet sneaks in here. But uh, yes, so I have a finished object to share. I have two half finished objects to share. I can't even remember what I've been working on since I last sat down or what I even shared last time I sat down. So you are sure to see probably some brand new stuff from me. And I've got a couple works in progress that I've really been focused on that I will share with you. And then I wanted to bring down uh, my Northeasterly blanket, which is something I started last Advent season in 2019 with an Advent calendar. I finally finished placing the last of 2019's minis into that uh, and definitely plan on adding to it uh, here in the next few days once I start opening up new Advents. So I wanted to share that with you so you could see where I'm at now before December 1st, and then hopefully I will have made lots of progress by the end of December. I completely forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode, I said I would circle back to it, and I didn't. But uh, in the Ravelry group, I am holding a Advent make-along. You do not have to have purchased a Lofty Loops Yarns Advent. It can be any Advent. You could be using minis as long as it is an advent themed project, please feel free to share those projects and your progress in that Ravelry thread. And all throughout the month of December, I plan on drawing random winners and sending them out maybe some minis or some scraps or whatever that you can either use to package up for next year's advent or just toss in a scrappy project, whatever you wanna do with them. Um, there will also probably be pattern giveaways as well for some of the advent patterns um, or scrappy project patterns. So check that out. Like I said, I want to draw random winners for that weekly, um, at least weekly, maybe a couple winners each week. Um, and I will likely draw those and announce them on Vlogmas. So 
definitely go check out that group or the thread in the group and then watch Vlogmas because I really want to make this super duper extra fun this uh, season and just share all of the knitting love with everyone. So I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, but just know that any advent themed anything that you're making, feel free to share along. It's just going to be a chatter thread. Um, so you can say what you want, you can respond to people, all of that will count towards um, a potential entry. So there won't be any finished objects thread yet, maybe, we'll see. Um, but it's supposed to be like, no pressure, just fun, festive um, camaraderie throughout throughout the next month. Uh, oh, one more thing on that note, I have a pattern to give away for you guys. Um, I wanted to make sure to do this before Vlogmas um, and before Advent started. Uh, Hannah of Yarnia Designs wanted to share with me a copy of her brand new pattern for the Advent season um, and gave me an extra copy to give away as well. This is one that I will be knitting. Uh, this is one of the projected projects <laughs> for the Advent season. I think I'm going to knit this with my own uh, Advent calendar because it's going to be really nice to show off the different colorways. Um, I'll insert a picture so you guys can see, but it is the Festive Cheer Cowl. And um, right now it's, let's see, it's 50% off in her Ravelry store right now until the end of December, so you have a few more days of that. But comment down below, let me know what you're most excited for um, through the end of this year. We're like in December, or maybe you're just excited to get 2020 over with. Um, let me know what excites you or what's exciting about the coming up month down below, and I will give away one of those patterns um, before, let's see, I will draw a winner. I'll announce the winner on the first day of Vlogmas. That way I can get it to you on December 1st and you will be able to knit on that if you are wanting to knit it for Advent. Like I said, I will be knitting on one. Um, it looks like it's going to be a fairly mindless knit um, while also just showcasing the beautiful colors of maybe Advent minis or maybe you're just using up scraps or maybe you have a color theme. I mean, it doesn't have to be Advent. It can be whatever you want. It would be really cool if you have two or three different colors that you're alternating throughout. Um, for less of a scrappy look and more of a, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Ooh, house colors could be cool. Um, maybe team colors could be cool. So many ideas. So let me know down below. I'll pick a winner. And uh, if you don't want to wait or don't want to comment and you just want to go support Hannah, then it is 50% off in her shop through the rest of this weekend. And I believe Monday through the end of November. So links will be down below. Okay, let's jump right in. First, I'm going to share the beautiful finished shawl. This is the Golden Dusk. That's what it is. I'm like, I knew it was Dusk something. But this is the Golden Dusk Shawl by Tammy Gore. If you guys have watched the podcast in the past, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of Tammy's patterns. I knit quite a few of them. And of course, I could not resist this one. This was actually a mystery knit along, I believe. Yes, it was. Um, so I, of course, jumped on and had to participate. And it's an asymmetrical shawl. I'm having a hard time getting it all in here. It is a DK weight and there is some brioche. There is some slip stitch detail. There's some other really fun pattern stitches in there, um, an eyelet section, more brioche, and then these real fun short row sections to make these little like ovals. And the colors I used were actually what Tammy used uh, from her 
or what Tammy used for her original design. So I went ahead and got the same colors because they are beautiful. And I'm going to forget the names, so I do apologize. I'll put them on the screen. Um, but this is Julie Aslin um, in the DK weight. And I don't have any of the bands anywhere, I don't think. I don't know where. I don't know where they went. But I will make sure to put it all obviously down below and then on the screen for you as well if you're curious. But it is, I want to say, silk. It's a silk merino blend. So it's very drapey, very squishy, and very gorgeous. Look at that pink. I love it. So I can actually, this is how I've been wearing it. I've just been tossing it on kind of like a, like a kerchief, handkerchief. Um, but you can of course style it many different ways, but, but because it's another DK shawl, it's going to be so nice and warm this winter, even though it's supposed to be like 60 degrees today here in Lincoln, Nebraska, where I live. And it's almost December and it's still 60 degrees outside. It's bonkers. But, you know, 2020, what else are you going to throw at us? We're kind of, we're up for anything at this point, right? So yes, Tammy Gore, Golden Dusk, it's beautiful. It was so entertaining to knit, just like Tammy's patterns always are. There's so much uh, differentiating textures and colors and things that you're doing, so I literally never get bored when I knit her patterns. So, yes, beautiful, so happy with it. I will likely, I could see myself knitting another one um, because it did work up relatively quickly because it's DK weight. So, so beautiful. Highly recommend. Let's see. I've got a couple half finished objects. Uh, and by that, I mean their socks. And for whatever reason, second sock syndrome has hit me hard. Um, I don't know why that is. I just keep, well, okay, let me back up. I have a billion socks on the needles. If you look at my Ravelry projects, you can tell I have probably at least 10 sock projects on the go. Some of them have the first sock done. And I'm just, I'm trying really hard to like circle back and start actually finishing off a lot of these pairs. But I'm kind of like, you know, a squirrel that sees a nut when a new project comes out or a new pattern comes out and then I just drop everything and start the new one. So you will see a couple different socks that I've finished. Um, neither one of them has had the second stock sock started. Um, the first one, I'm going to make sure I get all my information correct because like I said, it's been, it's been a hot minute and my brain isn't quite what it once was and so I forget these things. Okay, I test knit a while back, um, or I was asked to test knit. A wonderful sock pattern by Dana Ray or Dana Ray and they are the hearth socks and she has since created mittens a hat um, I believe a DK weight there are lots of different things in her shop using the same kind of um, block pattern look at how fun that is so I finished one sock and have not cast on the second, so I am so sorry. Um, but I did complete the one sock in the time requested um, and had a blast doing it. So this is a gorgeous finished sock. It's been finished for quite a while now. Um, and I just, like I said, I need to circle back and put the other one on the needles and get it finished because I could see these being very cozy um, this winter. But I am loving that, that stitch pattern so much. And I did, I can't remember what the pattern calls for, but there's a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset on there. And then I wanna say that I did follow pattern for the toe, which was slightly different than I typically do. Um, and I've got a little cow stitch marker on there from Hannah of the Corner of Craft hanging out. 
And the yarn that I used is um, Lofty Loops yarns in the Merlot colorway on the Lofty Tweed sock base. Um, which I don't carry very often anymore. I did for a while. Um, I don't know, maybe now that it's getting colder out I should bring it back, but Merlot is one of my favorite colors. It's just this whiny, whiny red and it's beautiful. So this is the Hearth Sock pattern and of course all links will be down below. I highly recommend um, if you're not a sock knitter, like I said, definitely head on over to uh, her Instagram or Ravelry shop because I'm fairly certain she has a hat pattern and some mittens as well and maybe some other things. So um, it's such a fun pattern to knit to and it's so easy. Um, honestly, it's knit pearls and slip stitches, so it's easily memor it's easy to memorize and yeah, you just you just go. So highly, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this sock. And the other sock that I had finished since we last sat down to chat was a just a vanilla sock using my Lofty Loops uh, vanilla sock pattern, which is a two by two rib cuff down, um, just stockinette slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and then my typical square toe. I don't know what the actual name of the toe is. Um, but this is knit out of peach... Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was right. This is Peach Queen Yarns, and it is the New Horizons colorway, which is completely inspired by Animal Crossing New Horizons so you know I had to get this color <laughs> um, and I did not obviously you could see here that I just kept on going for the slip stitch heel flap and gusset um, so I didn't change colors at all I just kept on going I will say I don't know there's like one round in here where the colors were changing so there's the green. The green blends a little bit better, but. So I've got this one itty bitty row of the color change where I started the heel flap, but that's okay with me. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I don't know. In the grand scheme of things, I think it looks pretty cute. And again, just vanilla sock. I need to finish the other one. I need to start the other one because um, these will be real cute to wear as well. Um, the markers I have on here, I mark every 10 rounds. That's a little trick I picked up from Kay, who is the crazy sock lady um, on YouTube. And it just helps, it helps me to know how many rounds I'm putting in for the leg um, and then the foot. So when I go back to make the second, I'll know. Um, I did not use that on my hearth socks because I just would follow the pattern repeats. But for vanilla socks, I like to mark every 10 rounds, so then I can easily see where I was at. Um, oh, and the sock blockers. I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram, but they are from Woodico. And I ordered these quite a while ago. I've got a medium sized and a large size. And they're just really nice. Heavy duty, they're pretty thick sock blockers, and they have a lot of different designs up here that they've laser cut. So I have the deer. Let's see, I guess I got my other ones right here. Ah, yes. And then I've got sheep. So they have a lot of different ones. Um, yeah, so I got a large and a medium size. They're great. I love them and they make things look real pretty uh, when you're trying to show them off on a podcast or an Instagram post. I actually, I don't ever soak my socks to block them when I've finished. Um, I usually just typically put them on and wear them. Um, and then after I wear them and wash them, I don't ever 
block them. I just lay them out flat to dry. Um, so really, sock blockers for me are purely a way to show off the sock. Um, the hearth socks, actually, because they're pattern, I might actually block them just to see what happens to the pattern. Um, but I finished it, I put it on the blocker, I took a picture, they've been sitting here ever since. So once I finish the other one, I'll probably pop properly block them. But usually, especially for just vanilla, I don't even bother with it. So. so that is what I have to share. Like I said, I think that shawl I started and finished in between episodes. Um, and that was pretty much my monogamous knitting, um, other than just having a vanilla sock to kind of just zone out and knit on while watching TV or whatever. Um, so now I'll get into works in progress. Oh, and sitting in this bag um, is something else I picked up recently um, to use to help me with Christmas gifts. But it's just a sock ruler, and I forget. Oh, it is Katrinkles. Okay, that's what I was like. I'm pretty sure it was Katrinkles, but it is. Um, yeah, so just a way to measure different sized socks for people if you're gift knitting. Um, but it's kind of weird for me since I am knitting cuff down. I think it works better if you're knitting toe up. But I don't know. I, I haven't used it enough yet to really figure out what I'm doing. But I got it just in case it comes in handy. That is trash. Um, a while back... I joined in on my local yarn shops, or one of my local yarn shops, um, Huskal Knit Along, and it was the COVID edition, um, because many of you know that football has kind of been weird because of the pandemic and making sure everyone's safe, and for a while we didn't think we were playing at all, and then we were, and then things got, I don't know, whatever. It's been a weird season. Um, but every year, Knit Paper Scissors, which is in Lincoln, Nebraska, they hold a Husker knit along. And usually the pattern is completely specific to this and exclusive. Um, so I joined in because I've seen some of the past years and I love them. So I wanted to definitely uh, knit this one as well. So let's see, it's a shawl and this is the pattern came with a finished picture so you knew what you were making it wasn't a mystery um, but you could choose your own colors so I think there were six different colors all dyed by Lazy Bee Yarn who is another dyer here in Lincoln Nebraska um, so lots of different options to choose from so you could kind of create your own color scheme and I had fallen way behind because I was focused more on the Tammy Gore Mystery Knit Along. Um, but I made decent progress. So here's where I'm at. And it is going to be like a, or like the picture showed, a very large asymmetric shawl. Oh my gosh. So I went with this dark gray color into a white and black speckled and then just a solid red. So Husker colors. And again, I'm gonna forget the names of these. I believe they're only available through Knit Paper Scissors. So if you are interested in any of these, um, you'll have to hit up their online shop or if you're local, then you can definitely stop in. But I love this section. The lace section is going to pop like crazy once blocked. 
So there's a lot of just stockinette sections with some garter sections. It's a cute how that rolls up. It really makes it look like underwear when it's rolling like that. <sighs> yeah, it's a lovely little thong, don't you think? Um, so I am, I believe, heading towards the color work section, which I am really excited for. So here, if you can see, I don't know how well it's gonna come across, but this color work section in here, they're actually little footballs. So that's cute. So I am more than halfway done. Um, it's going slowly but surely. And here are the cakes I'm using. So that's just a black and white speckled in a dark gray solid and then a red solid. And the kit also came with this cute little zipper pouch that has the paper scissors logo on it. So notions, maybe a pencil holder. It would hold a notebook. Um, probably not for a project, but maybe you could fit a pair of socks in there. Um, but it's just kind of cute to pop in and keep in your uh, project bag. And it, I have a funny story to go along with this, but it is still hanging out in the bag. Uh, when I went to do the curbside pickup, this was this is their bag that they put your purchased goods in. So I've just left it in this, and I don't know if you can tell. Can you see all that coffee? We had a coffee accident. Uh, it was a thing. So quick story. I have a sofa table that I purchased, but then when we rearranged, we pushed our sofa all the way up against the wall, and it's actually a reclining sofa, so we can't have anything behind it. So the sofa table has kind of moved off to the side, and now it's more of a glorified end table, if you will. But it has shelves along the bottom, and that is where I stack up all of my project bags. And by all my project bags, I mean like all my pro- there's a lot. It's, it's full, it falls over, it's a mess. Um, but that's where I keep my project bags, and I also set my drinks up on the top. I had my coffee up there. I had asked my daughter one day to toss me the blanket from the other couch. Totally not her fault. She did not mean to, but she tossed the blanket. It hit my full cup of coffee, and it fell, and completely drenched half of the project bags that were sitting on the bottom shelf. So. She felt awful. I felt bad because she felt bad. I felt bad because I'm an idiot and I put all my stuff in a very precarious situation. But anyway, long story short, a lot of my works in progress took a premature bath and soaked out a lot of the coffee. Um, and some of my project bags had to go into the wash. But that one, seeing as how it's paper, it still has beautiful coffee stains all over it. I did tell her that on the plus side, now all of my projects smell like coffee and I love coffee, so it's kind of a win if you ask me. She felt so bad. Um, this, specifically this next project, was one that took most of the coffee and it's the one I've been working on the most recently. It was, it was, it was a whole situation, but I tried to like keep her from feeling too awful about it. So this isn't a brand new project bag because the other one had been washed and I stuck it in this one. This bag is by Sweet Sparrow Yarns and I joined in her foraging, her foraging club, I think it was called, which was a three month club. You got three skeins of yarn and then the last month you also got a project bag. And I did not know it was going to be this large. But I believe she actually drew... I want to say she drew... The, the plants on here. And then she had fabric made. So it's all foraging stuff. So there's mushrooms, there's leaves, there's flowers, there's berries, there's 
And she, if you are into that kind of thing, definitely check out her Instagram stories because she usually goes on a walk every morning and just forages around uh, the area she lives by and just finds like the coolest things. Um, it's just, it's very fun and relaxing to watch her do that. So I'm glad that she shares that. Um, it's also very interesting to a person who's not so outdoorsy but can live vicariously through Julie. So Julie, thank you if you see this. Um, and this bag is beautiful. It's a canvas bag. It's so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be, um, which is fabulous. And I'll share the yarn here in a little bit. But inside, is my dust of snow shawl this you likely have seen before I started this last December or actually I think I started it after December was over but I used my lofty loops yarn advent from 2019 um, and started a dust of snow by Helen Stewart or curious handmade so this was the beginning end. I'm showing it upside down or from start to whatever. Um, I'm not going to be able to probably name off all the colorways, but if you're interested, check out the project page. I've got them all in order. Um, these are all, like I said, uh, my hand dyed yarn. Most of them are, actually I think all of them are repeatable and have become regulars in the shop. So there's anything that catches your eye holler at me but I'm trying to see the best way I can share this it's just a very long rectangle knit, whoop, knit on the bias and you change colors each section so it's using minis you could knit it not using minis if you want you could knit it all one color and it'd be beautiful um, yeah, it was from her Knit Vent 2019, I think. Um, so I have just been really putting in a lot of work on this recently, knowing that I have more Advents coming up that I want to knit on. Um, I'm in no rush to finish this. I think I'm only on color 12. I just started, this is color 12, so I'm halfway through. Um, so this may get done by next December, who knows. I'm just enjoying the process. Um, it is knit holding a skein of fingering weight yarn with a skein of mohair. So you can see the fuzzy halo there. And I am just using some undyed mohair that's from my shop just to kind of give it, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking it would make it look more dust of dusted with snow. See what I did there? I'm an idiot. It's fine. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's just, ooh, I love that section. Mm, look at those stitches. Um, each little section is different, so it adds some variety in there. It's super easy though. It's all, even the little lace bits are very simple. Um, yeah, it's, I've been watching or knitting on this while watching TV even. Um, and I've been completing about a color a day, I'd say. So it's, it's definitely going, um, but it's, it's not going to be done before the first. So this will likely go into a little bit of hibernation again while I focus on, you know, new advents because squirrel. And here I've actually caked up the rest of my minis from my advent last year. So I've got them all ready to go, which was part of the reason I was, was just languished for so long. Cause I don't know, I just didn't want to come down and wind up all the minis. But so here's what I have left. There's not exactly, I can't remember what I did. I think I stole a couple of my minis for other projects. So I don't have, all 24 uh, from my advent calendar last year that will be going into this, but that's fine. I'll just end it early. Um, 
yeah, and it's already going to be forever long. So I'm sure ending it early won't be too bad. And last, but certainly not least, more Advent knitting from last year. And this has really become my Scrappy Sunday knitting as well. Um, if you watch Kay's podcast, The Crazy Sock Lady, um, or follow her on Instagram, she has kind of started this movement of Scrappy Sunday, where every Sunday is dedicated to working on scrappy projects. So a lot of the times your scrappy projects are the ones that kind of languish and sit on the back burner. Um, but Scrappy Sunday is a way to kind of say, you know what, it's Sunday, I'm gonna pull out those scrappy projects, put a good bit of work into them, and then I can put them away again for the week if I feel like I need to focus on other things. So this has become Scrappy Sunday. It is my Northeasterly. I have officially finished, yeah, officially finished three stripes, starting the fourth. Some of these colors are scraps left over from other projects or some of my own, like that is Lotus right there that was left over. That's some of my yarn. Um, this is Madeline Tosh, which was a leftover from a shawl I did. But the majority of these are from Sweet Sparrow Yarns Advent last year. Um, and those were, I think they were 10 gram minis and they were all different bases that she carries in her shop, which was really fun. All fingering weight. Um, but as you can see here, like there's a slub base. This one right here what is Yak. Um, this one is just her sock base, and I forget what she calls all of her bases, but then there were some glit, or not glitz, that's what I call it. Then there were some Stellina bases too. So um, I put them all in here and I actually, I like how the slub kind of pops randomly and gives it just a little bit of texture. Um, it's gonna be a real fun blanket when it's all done. Uh, but let's see, what else do I have to say about this? Sorry, I've got my, my needle rolling around in the box that I keep this in. But it's right now, it's just a very long scarf at this point. Um, the Northeasterly is one where it's completely like knit your own adventure type thing. Um, you can make it as long as you want, as wide as you want. You basically just get the instructions to make these little chevron panels and then you can change colors whenever you want. Um, yeah, like I said, you can end it wherever you want and start the new row. You can stop mid-row and add a new row. Like, it's completely entirely up to you and it's a very easy pattern to follow. It is by Skinanigans. Um, some of these are actually Suburban Stitcher, and I think in here I've tossed in somewhere. I don't know where. Um, but I did toss in some Leading Men Fiber Arts. I think this this one right here, I believe, is Leading Men Fiber Arts. Um, but yeah, like I said, the majority of these are Sweet Sparrow. And I did get a advent calendar from Julie again this year, so... I will be adding those minis to this blanket as well. Um, I don't know if you can see here. Oh yeah, you can. That's some coffee. <laughs> this also uh, was a victim of the coffee fiasco that happened about a week and a half ago. Um, it didn't get it too bad, so I have not yet washed. Yeah, I haven't washed this yet. Um, but yeah, so it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a coffee stain going on there. But this is going to end up being a throw blanket for um, the couch or whatever. So it's not like. It has mohair in it, and I'm super worried about having it doused in coffee, but eventually it will get a bath, and all of that will come out. Or it won't, and it'll be a fun memory of 
coffee gate. Um, so yeah, that's my, oh, I should also mention, um, I am holding the minis double. So they're all fingering weight, but I held them double um, to create a DK weight. So Skinny uh in the pattern has a fingering weight version and a DK weight version. I'm following the DK weight version with fingering weight yarn held double. I think that makes sense. Um, and by doing that, as you can see, I'm actually, let me see if I can show you an example of how I do that. I can show you. I'll use one of my other caked up minis. So I'm caking them all up. I'm pulling one of the ends from the center and then I'm holding it with the end from the outside. So as, and then I start using it here. So as I'm knitting, there is a little bit of yarn management that happens so you don't get super tangled. But as I'm knitting, it's coming from the outside and the inside at the same time. And that is how, um, I don't know, that's just how I've been doing it. It seems to be okay. I know a lot of people will put their minis if they're doing it like that, um, like in a baggie and cut holes or rip the corners off of each end and then put one, put one in through one corner and the other end through the other corner and then the baggie kind of keeps it contained so it's not going all over the place and getting tangled upon itself but um, I don't know I found that it it's working for me um, you can also use a yarn bowl if you have one and set the cake in it put one end through the hole of the yarn bowl and then the other end comes just out the top so as you're working it's kind of feeding through and keeping those um, I don't know keeping them from getting too tangled but just go slow and watch it. Um, I don't know. That's just how I've been doing it. I'm sure there's better ways, but I was not about to sit down and split all 24 of the 10 gram minis in half into five gram cakes. No, like that is way too much work for me. Um, so that's just what I've been doing. And so far it's been working, knock on wood. Let's see. Okay, so that's what I've been working on. Um, they will likely take a back seat after this weekend uh, because Advents are coming. I'm so, so excited to open up these Advents. I have been good. I have not peeked at any of them. Um, and that is purely, entirely, totally for you guys. If it wasn't for a Vlogmas, I would have ripped into these the instant they showed up at my door. But knowing that I want to record Vlogmas has kept me from doing that. Um, because, I don't know, I just, it's so fun to open them up and share them with everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at them. They're sitting over here on my, on my work table and I've got them all ready to go. Um, one is still in the mail, so hopefully it shows up, uh, soon, but they are coming and I bought a little Christmas tree, a little tiny, like, I don't know how big it is, 18 inches maybe, um, to put up in my office so I'm going to decorate that today and make it look real festive and I'm just so excited I'm so excited um, I have picked all of my patterns that I'm going to be knitting with advent calendars I have listed them all on my or I've created Ravelry projects for all of them um, but also if you check out the vlogmas 2020 teaser I talk about it a little bit in there too if you haven't watched that yet um, but I do plan on working three projects throughout Advent. <laughs> we shall see um, how well I'm able to do that. Still working full-time, still working full-time at Lofty Loops Yarns as well, dyeing up yarn, shipping out orders. Um, we'll see how much time I have. This whole working from home thing has been kind of a double-edged sword because while I love being in the office and working around people. It's also allowed me more like downtime throughout the day or where if I used to take breaks before during my work day, I'd go down to the break room and maybe snack on something or um, go walk the halls a little bit. 
Um, now I take a little bit of a break and I knit for five, ten minutes. Um, or I can get, you know, I can switch over a load of laundry or whatever. So I've kind of learned how to remanage my time a little bit. But I do think, having said that, three advents, three advent projects is going to be a lot <laughs> to keep up with. But I'm going to do my best. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get into a little bit of just showing you a few things that I've gotten over the last a uh, couple months, but I'm sure that there's more I'm completely forgetting. Um, but I did want to just quickly call out a few things. Um, then we'll just chat a little bit about what else has been going on in my life in the last few months because it's been a crazy whirlwind, you guys. There has been a lot going on. A lot of things have changed. Um, and so many things have stayed the same because, you know, the crisis we're all in. But um, I'll chat about that just a little bit if you guys care to stick around. Okay, just a little bit of stash enhancement or things that I've picked up over the last couple months that I wanted to share. Um, I'll run through these quickly because I know not everyone's into that, but um, y'all know how much I love Rose Hill yarns. I have been fangirling over Rose Hill yarns for a little while now. Um, made a few purchases from her shop and this was the latest so this is deeply rooted which I don't know why I've been really drawn to greens lately but it's got a really pretty purple color in it as well and this is 463 yards for 100 grams 75% superwash merino 25% nylon so this will be a beautiful pair of socks um, I also picked up a sock set of On Lake Time. So this is really pretty aqua blue with speckles of green and some brown throughout. And then it came with a green mini to coordinate. Again, this is her sock base. It's called On Lake Time. Oh, and this was a yarn club color. So I grabbed it while I could. And one cannot simply buy just two, two items. Um, so, you know, some more made it into my cart. This I love so much. It is a half skein plus a mini. So it'll make a pair, a decent pair of socks. Um, this is Blueberry Waffles, and I just love the color scheme so much, so I had I could not resist. So it'll be a really fun pair of socks. I can typically get a full pair of socks out of half a skein of yarn, so especially with a matching mini, um, or coordinating mini, I'll be able to do probably at least the heels and toes with the mini. Um, and yeah, so that should be plenty for me. So I picked up those, and then I mentioned Sweet Sparrow Yarns uh, Foraging Club, and these were the skeins that came each month. So this was the first month, this was the second, and then this was the last month. Um, they are all based on things that she finds while she's foraging. So this white one is Oyster Mushroom, and they've all come with a little progress keeper, uh, like a little stone, precious stone um, progress keeper that fits with the theme. This is on her house wren, her house wren base, which is an 8515 superwash merino and nylon. So it's very pretty, very soft. Um, this is Wineberry, which is a tweed base, it's a really pretty deep red. Um, 
And then this is on her owl base, which is the yak base. So superwash merino yak and nylon. It's a 70 20 10. And this colorway is chicken of the wood. It's really cool, like gold yellow. I love Julie's yarn. I love her dye aesthetic. I'm really loving her project bag that she included in that club. Um, so I will likely be. If she does it again, I will probably be joining. I got a message on Instagram um, of someone wanting to share a book with me. Um, Sarah works for Penguin Random House um, and she wanted to share this book, which is The Power of Knitting. And it was written by, I'm gonna butcher her name, Loretta Napoleoni? Napoleoni? I'm so sorry. I'm the worst. Um, I have yet to read this, but they wanted to share a copy of the book with me so I could share it with you guys. And like I said, full disclosure, I have not had a chance to sit down and read it yet, so I don't have a full review of it, but I definitely wanted to share it. It is uh, a book about how knitting empowers, heals, and reconnects us to one another and ourselves. And this is a perfect time um, to feel that. I think we're all feeling that right now, being confined to our homes uh, for the majority of our days. Um, we're reaching out on social media, in our virtual knitting groups, uh, what have you, and chatting with the people that have things in common with us. Um, and just to bring us a little bit of peace throughout this time. Um, the back says, whether we're facing anxiety, loneliness, or uncertain times, check, check, and check, knitting is a powerful tool for sur survival and a metaphor for life. Um, join lifelong knitter Loretta on a voyage through history following the yarn of social, economic, and political changes and a personal journey of discovery as well, purling and stitching every step of the way in this remarkable exploration of the power of knitting. So this has could not have come at a better time and I really just need to make time to sit down and read through it. It's a wonderfully well-made book. It has cute illustrations throughout. Um, oh, and it does have patterns in the back. Very cool. There's a pattern for World War I and II service socks. There is the pussy hat. It's uh, $20 US and it's hardbound very well put together book. Um, it's, let's see, it's a little over 200 pages. There's plenty of chapters, lots of good reading in here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, ten patterns at the end. So, well worth it. Um, I'll leave a link to the Amazon uh, listing below. I'm not sure if it's sold in any retail shops, but I know it's available on Amazon. Um, so I'll, I'll do some research and I'll leave all those links down below. Obviously if um, there's a retail place or maybe direct from um, the author, I'll be sure to link that instead of Amazon, but um, I know for sure it's on Amazon. So that is The Power of Knitting. Once I sit down and finally read through it, I promise to share a full review with you guys. Um, and I just need I just need to sit down and put my mind to it. Okay, uh, I think that's all I have as far as knitting content is concerned. Like I said, it's been a crazy few months. Um, I've been pretty monogamous in my knitting, which is very surprising for me. I've just been feeling a lot of calm, kind of going back to like my dust of snow, for example, and just putting in work, putting in work on my northeasterly. Um, I have a handful of projects that I've started um, over the course of the summer. 
that I was super excited about. Uh, and then they just kind of, I'm still excited, they just aren't taking priority in my life right now. So I don't know why I've been feeling like I need to circle back to some of these older projects and especially socks or vanilla sock knitting, just some of the things that, I don't know, they're just bringing me a lot of peace and calm throughout, throughout feeling like everything else surrounding me is just in full chaos. Um, I'm the type of person who likes to feel like I'm in control. Um, and when the world is so far out of my control, um, I guess I'm searching for, I don't know, I don't know. This is, yeah, this is not a psychology podcast, nor is it therapy, but just know that um, I'm struggling right along with you guys. Uh, you're not alone. And if you have any hot takes or deep thoughts or tips and tricks, please let me know down below. Let me know how you're coping, what works for you. Um, so outside of the whole pandemic that's still going on, we had the voting and elections happened. So that was also very much anxiety inducing. Um, what else? Oh, I ended up leaving my job after almost 10 years uh, working for them and took a new job. An opportunity presented itself and this is a place that um, I'm a web developer during the day. So I live in Codeland. Um, it was for an agency here in town um, that I was with for a very long time, marketing agency. Uh, but like I said, new opportunity presented itself at a place where I'm sure every developer has is aware of um, in our in in the Silicon Prairie. Um, but they reached out and needed a in-house developer. Um, so I am now on their marketing team running all of their web entities, which is very exciting. And um, it's just a great place to work. Uh, so far, I've been there about five, five, maybe going on six weeks now. Um, it's a great place. Obviously, I started uh, working right, immediately. I have not worked in the office. Um, everyone is still remote. So that's been interesting to leave a job and then start a new job over Zoom. Uh, but we're making it, we're surviving, we're figuring it out, and uh, it's been going really well. I'm just very excited to uh, hopefully join them in the office one day because they have a beautiful office in downtown Lincoln, and um, I'm really excited to be able to work there and just be inspired by uh, just the Haymarket area, if, you, if you're familiar with Lincoln at all. We have a wonderful little downtown historic Haymarket area. Um, and this office is like right smack dab in the middle. It's a brand new building. Um, yeah, I love the vibe down there. I just, I love all the feelings you get from being down in that area. So really looking forward to the day when we can all safely return to work. Um, but in the meantime, my gosh, my kids have been dealing with school. Um, whether they're going remote or full-time in person. Um, my daughter so far has been in person learning. She's in middle school. We did the remote thing for a while, but she is the type of kiddo that needs to be in the class to really um, focus and take in uh, the information. She was just, remote learning was giving her a lot of anxiety. Um, and so it was, we made the decision it was best for her to go back to in-person, uh, since that was an option. And my son, who is in high school, he actually, um, splits his time. So the high schools are splitting where they go half the week remote and half the week in-person. And then the other, they've split the kids down the middle. So half of the group goes one half of the time and then they'll flip-flop and the other half will go, um, when the other ones are remoting. So they're kind of cutting down on the number of kids that are in school at one time. Um, he seems to be managing that a lot better. Um, and he is enjoying the remote uh, working from home or schooling from home. Um, but I also, I feel really bad because I don't want them to miss out on all of those memories that you make when you're in high school. Um, 
all those in-person memories. Like, it's just a shame that the kids aren't able to really do the clubs and the sports and the things that um, we're all accustomed to. Um, so while I want them to be safe and while I want everyone around them to be safe, I also don't want to rob them of all the experiences that they should have growing up. Um, so it's a, it's a balancing act and we're managing, but um, we're taking it day by day, week by week. So, so far, no one in the family has uh, gotten the Rona, which is good. There are quite a few people around me that I know that have. Um, they're all healthy and have gotten through it. And um, so we're just, we're just making sure that we're still being safe. Uh, we're using all the necessary precautions um, and just trying to manage life in a smart, safe way moving forward. Um, while also, you know, not being entirely confined to these walls because we're all going a little bit stir crazy. So we're finding little ways to get out safely um, every now and again. So uh, let's see what else. I think that's really all I have uh, to share with you guys as far as the episode goes, but please stick around for Vlogmas if you're into that kind of thing. They will likely be short, just quick episodes, maybe five to 10 minutes long um, each day. I'm gonna shoot for each day, but Hopefully I can manage that on top of my new work schedule. Um, but at the very least, I will be sharing, uh, opening up each admin. Um, if you haven't watched the teaser, I do have an advent from Lavender Loon Yarn Company. And I did a swap with Hannah of the Corner of Craft. So I have one from her. I'm getting one from Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns. I have one of my own. That's four. Goodness gravy. Um, I have a 12 Days of Magical Matcha from Burden Blend, which is not numbered, um, but there are 12 little sampler tins in there, so I will be trying those throughout the month of December. I love matcha. And uh, my brother got me a Funko Pop Nightmare Before Christmas advent calendar for my birthday back in October, so uh, I love Tim Burton. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to opening up those little guys throughout the month as well. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Um, thank you for being so patient with me. Um, if you stuck around this long and waited for a new episode, I deeply appreciate it. Um, you guys are awesome. I love seeing the messages and you guys reaching out saying that you missed the episodes. And um, I'm glad that you guys are taking the time to just allow me into your lives uh, while you're making or cooking or whatever it may be working out. I don't know. Um, I watch podcasts while I attempt to run on a treadmill sometimes. Um, puts me in my happy place when I'm feeling not so happy uh, torturing myself on the treadmill. But uh, whatever it is that you guys may be doing, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you stuck around. If this was your first episode you've watched, Welcome, thanks for checking it out. I hope you stick around for Vlogmas. Um, and make sure that you guys head on over to the Ravelry thread to join in on that make along. Like I said, low pressure, super fun, super casual. If you're making anything advent, knitting, knitting, sewing, baking, crocheting, coloring, I don't care what you're doing. If you're making and being crafty um, and it's an advent theme, you are eligible to join us and I will be playing Oprah through the month of December. You get a pattern, you get a pattern, you get a mini, you get a mini, everyone gets a mini. Not everyone will get a mini, but you know, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a good time and I'm really looking forward to it. So I will see you guys in Vlogmas. Bye.